Hello everyone! In this video, I'm gonna introduce this adjustable switching power supply. All you need to do is to connect an AC step down transformer to the input and adjust the potentiometer to set your desired output voltage. I designed the schematic and PCB using Altium Designer and shared the PCB with my friends through Altium 365 to get their edits and feedback. To obtain high quality fabricated boards, I sent the Gerbers to PCB Way and as you can see, the board fabrication and silk screen quality are excellent. The step down controller is the TPS54202 chip, which is compact in size. Let's examine the chip using the Octopart website. It provides a variety of useful information, including inventory history, price trends, and necessary component characteristics. According to the information available, the minimum output voltage of the chip can be as low as 0.6 volts and it can accept input voltages up to 28 volts. Additionally, the chip's ability to deliver a continuous current of 2 amps is particularly intriguing given its small SOT236 package. Let's go to Altium Designer to examine the PCB. If you don't have the Altium on your computer, the only thing you need to do is to follow this link in the YouTube video description and fill out a form. That allows you to download the latest version of the Altium and activate it with a free legal license. You can examine the schematic with a full description in the article, so just check the article link in the YouTube video description. So, I skipped the schematic and directly talk about the PCB layout in the Altium Designer. As I always mention, the correct placement of the components is the first golden rule in a good PCB design. In the case of a high frequency buck converter like this, where there is no output diode, it's crucial to position the inductor as close as possible to the controller. The input and output capacitors should be placed in a hierarchical order, which means the smallest capacitor should be as close as possible to the controller and vice versa. The length of the ground path should be minimized as much as possible. To achieve this, I have utilized top and bottom ground connected polygons to cover the board. However, I have also created polygon cutouts to establish clearance between the AC input and the ground. Another effective technique is placing wires near the controller and bypass capacitors, which aids in reducing the length of the ground path. By implementing these measures, we can experience the advantage of reduced noise, enhanced stability, and improved overall performance for the circuit. This is the document of assembly drawings that provides you with insights for inspection purposes. I will conduct two tests to evaluate the circuit, I mean input-output noise and load step response. First, let's place the oscilloscope probe at the controller input to observe the significant input ripple. Our small controller should be capable of handling this. Next, let's position the oscilloscope probe at the output and measure the noise with no load. We expect the noise level to be low. I connect the output to the DC load and apply a 2 amps load. I intend to measure the output noise under the worst case scenario. Considering the extremely high input ripple, the power supply performs well.
For the load step response test, I set the DC load to generate this current pulse and examine the output voltage for a stability, recovery time, and ringing. As you see, the power supply performs well and recovers rapidly.